Well, how fitting that it should come down to these two. Olive in her familiar black, five times the champion. Mabel, the rising star, winner last year. You can see how excited they are, but also feel the tension. Get on with it. And here it's in the crowd as we near the start of this final. And now they go, Olive away first, but a problem with Mabel's ball. That might cost her now, having to play catch up. Both settling quickly into rhythm. You can see the contrast in styles. Mabel, heavy tail use, happy to be alive. Everything's amazing. Olive, more steady, wasting little energy. Very much of the old Labrador school. Eating's a serious business. Don't bollocks around wagging your tail. And Mabel seems just a, a little sluggish here. Perhaps more was taken out of her by the worm medicine she was given last night than we thought. But Olive, focused, relentless, tasting absolutely nothing. Mabel trying but surely a lost cause, her title defence coming to an end, Olive taking everything, nothing left but the ball to lick now. And Mabel, well, doesn't seem too upset, a bit of class there from the youngster, generous in what will surely be defeat because Olive has won now, she's taken the title back at seven and a half. Mabel looking to offer congratulations again to the dog who was her inspiration growing up. Once more, wonderful to see that spirit in the game. What a final we've had here, great rivals, but Great friends. Oh, and you see the swapping of bowls at the end. Uh, join us again tomorrow. Live coverage of a snooze on the sofa, possibly. Bye for now. Jared, these uh, animals are getting unbelievable attention right now is uh, the one thing that kind of sticks out to me. How many, uh, how many views is that at the moment? Seven million, something around that? So, something like that. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you have uh, A, any inanimate object around the house or B, an animal, no, done the sort of commentary on us at the moment. Are you actually in lockdown? Is what I would question. Uh, that was that was the uh, BBC's Andrew Cotter commentating on his uh, two Labradors eating their food. Big fan as well of uh, whoever the person was in the background at the start saying, "Get on with it." Um, Get on with it. And, uh, this is the the lockdown lowdown, of course, where we've been parsing through the internet to see what's been going on. Uh, something that's cost uh, 136 thousand views on Twitter is from Shane Welsh, Welsh of uh, Tullerone. Uh, he, he tweeted saying, a young lad from our club in Tullerone uh, hurling. Uh, he's posted this video. The only problem is which sport will he be playing? Please let it be hurling. This is incredible. Have a look. You rock, Cara Ford, free tag. That's how we do it. Tom Brady LeBron James Cavaliers. Tiger Woods. Come on. Kyle Walker, Man City, the Trolling King. Um. So poor Patrick Horgan with his uh, his squeaky voice in the middle of that. <laughs> 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 Pretty impressive stuff, but um, he needs to be he needs to be careful. Shane Walsh acting as his agent here, giving that video away for nothing. I'd be like, here, listen, you know, where's my cut? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd be uh, worried as well for any Kilkenny. And like, it's the key to, to to running Kilkenny hurling that you keep guys under wraps and you don't let the secret get out until they're a minor or under twenty one, and you know they've won a they've won a medal or two, and then they're in hurling for life. This guy now, the Kilkenny footballers could be sniffing around the the, the golf union of Ireland could be sniffing around, uh, and like fair play to. Uh, the the parents or the the uh, adults in the house for allowing a kid to take out a golf club and a ball and uh, hit it towards the house at any point and having to trust in him to know that it wouldn't touch the window as it went in unbelievable ray of talents yeah but the the big question is what the hell is he doing wearing a Dublin football jersey this is the thing I'd like to, this is clearly uh, Dublin's financial it's prowess it's like He's, a disease. Uh, yeah, it really spreading is. across the country, stealing our youngsters. He's gonna he's gonna be um, Pan O'Callaghan for his jersey come the come the championship this year. Uh, I don't know how how you did you get up to much at the weekend though? Did you did you do anything particularly interesting or did you achieve much with your life? 
Are you uh, eight, the lot? That's yeah, it. anything. Nice. Are you are you one of the three or four people in the world who didn't make banana bread at the weekends? I think I might be actually. I think I might have eaten every yeah, food okay. under the sun that isn't called banana bread and made every food under the sun that's not called banana bread. It's pretty good. I recommend it. I did it on Saturday thinking, oh, and then turned on my social media and turned out half the world was doing exactly the same thing. Here's Michael Conlon. Mine is very good, by the way. I don't normally eat breakfast, but I'm making an exception for my uh, for my own banana bread. Um, bake some banana bread today. I'm prepared for hibernation. <laughs> That's Michael Conlon, and uh, I think he's uh, he's flying low. <laughs> so uh, one of those like oh, balls shouldn't shouldn't have tweeted that, but he did. Fair play to him. <laughs> and um, Nicola Coughlin from Dairy Girls also making banana bread this weekend, and a lot of people who then obviously were like did exactly the same thing. Um, the Dairy Girls seem to be having, uh, they're they're definitely doing well during quarantine here, not just the fact that everybody's watching it on uh, Netflix, but they're uh, legitimately funny in real life too. Yeah, absolutely. And what's the recipe for banana bread? Oh, it's like flour, bicarbonate of soda, a bit of salt, um, butter and sugar, a lot of sugar, some vanilla, some mashed bananas, and... Uh, Obviously, chocolate if you want it. Or uh, I saw my sister was like, oh, stick a bit of peanut butter in. I didn't. I would like to. Um, I'll do that next time. I'll be a bit more ambitious. And then that's it. That's it. It's like it's it's probably because it's the easiest thing in the world to make. I didn't, and it I looks didn't understand. Good. I didn't understand why flour had been sold out everywhere, but I now realize why that is the case. Yeah, because you can make your own bread. You don't have to be, you know, uh, using a JCB to break down a supermarket to get some bread if you want it mm. yeah there's some, there is something unbelievably comforting about bread of all sorts at the moment and then something comforting about sweet food in general so you're combining them both with banana bread that's my psychological breakdown on why banana bread is so popular at the moment it's uh, both bread and sweet mm. exactly give me some of that exactly. sweet sweet banana bread like, can everybody can everybody see that can everybody see just like the texture of it it's perfect I, I, um, I can't see what you're holding up there just to, for a, FYI to the audience this morning but uh, it does it, it sounds good it sounds good um, I'm not going to lie like it, how does it compare with say just mashed banana on bread or how does it like banana bread in general mm. it's moist it's nice it's like a, it gets better on day two you know the way most bread gets stale yeah it gets better ingredients soak in and it kind of, it's like um, it's like a good curry, better after 36 hours. Uh, I'm actually I surprised think, at how well it came out, to be honest. I think that's the first time the word moist has ever been used on OTBAM, and I need to go take a shower. <laughs> I don't know why you're so filthy. I don't know why that word has so many, I don't know why so many people are, have an issue with that word. It's like, you know the way some people can't look at frogs, especially the ones with holes in them. Um, the word moist apparently seems to have a, a similar reaction. I want to talk about uh, the other thing that we all did at the weekend, which was uh, invited some uh, 3D animals into our uh, homes. Mm. This uh, was it late Saturday evening. We got a WhatsApp going. We spent a lot of time today on this, and suddenly we had a tiger in our living room. We had um, the the horse was absolutely massive. Uh, there was a hedgehog, which was perfect as well. Uh, there was a shark, which was very impressive. So if anybody doesn't know, over the course of the weekend, on most phones, I think, um, Google released this thing where if you search for an animal, an emperor penguin, for example, search for that, and then it's, oh, would you like to see one in real life? And then you press the button and uh, 3D one appears in your living space or wherever the um, camera is switched on to. Uh, what did you have on? I mean, obviously, you're a grown-up and you've no kids, so you've no real excuse to be doing this, but what did you do? No, I like, created a, a virtual cat and just stared at it, and the cat stared at me for a good 20 minutes. <laughs> and you didn't get your mates in kind of funny situations with it? I mean, no. that, that's obviously what's going to happen now over the next while. No, I just if... I entertained myself with the cat, and uh, that was it. That's 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 how I that's how I lead my life. There there has been like I know the, the DSPCA are like uh, increasing uh, the opportunities for people to, to foster animals, and uh, and I think that they've actually got to a stage where so many people have fostered animals at this point that they're actually running out of animals, which is a great story. Obviously, uh, I'm sure people wanted to log on. I'm sure there's still a few, but um, maybe this is a way to fill that void if you haven't been lucky enough to foster an animal. If that's something you wanted to do. 
take up Google and just create a cat, create a dog, put it in your living room. I tried to look for a red panda, but they don't have red panda yet. I, I'm surprised they have emperor penguins. They have giant pandas. You could have a giant panda. But I mean, if any psychologist out there want to give us a Freudian analysis of Owen spending a lot of time in his room with uh, 3D of a cat, then I, I'd be happy to uh, bring them to air. You can um, just uh, get us on Twitter at Off the Ball. Uh, I want to move on quickly because this, this is the reason we brought this up. Um, uh, a listener whose name is Kieran Boyle sent this in to Golf Weekly uh, to Joe and Nathan. We're still able to play golf here in Florida. Listening to the pod on the cart with some gators keeping me company. Big fan of the show. Keep them coming. Hashtag friend of the pod. And there is like an actual alligator. The alligator is very impressive in the Google 3D, by the way. There's an actual alligator in the water there who looks like uh, he's a little bit close for comfort. The 3D ones are scary enough where they turn, they pivot, and they, they snap. Uh, that's like a real one in the water as you play golf. And I'm not sure I would really like that. Uh, have you got one last one for us, Owen? Yeah. Uh, it's time for Belarus to shine, Jer, because the league has been attracting global attention as it plays on. So on Saturday, there were t- six uh, top flight games uh, in Belarus, including the derby between FC Minsk and Dynamo Minsk, uh, watched by capacity 3,000 crowd uh, in the Belarus capital. Uh, it so happened that this derby was practically the only official football match on earth, read Dynamo's match report after their 3 2 defeat. Uh, there's been fewer than 100 cases and no deaths so far from coronavirus uh, in Belarus, which has a population of around 9.5 million. Um, like the, it seems that their president really? is worried. What's, well, you know, this is. Uh, this is the, the thing. Your, 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 your skepticism is going to ruin a good news story, uh, Jer. Um, there's like been uh, a situation here where like the, the president has kind of suggested that citizens of the country drink vodka to combat the disease. So they're obviously taking this thing uh, very seriously indeed. Um, but the Belarus Football Association said they've taken uh, all uh, procedures to actually ensure these things can go ahead. But um, there you go. If you're looking for uh, a bit of action, if you're if you're looking to get behind a team, then perhaps FC Minsk or Dynamo Minsk is a team for you right now. All right. Uh, good stuff. And we'll obviously, uh, I mean, we say it now, we're, we're laughing, but we're going to be watching those games at some point over the next mm. uh, few weeks going, oh, all right, uh, I like their formation there. I, li- I like what you've done with the place. 